In the beginning, life was simple. A single cell floating in the ancient oceans, eating, dividing, and surviving. But as millions of years passed, life diversified into forms so strange, so beautiful, and so complex, that no single mind could remember them all. Some lived in water, some on land. Some moved, some stayed still. Some had bones, brains, lungs, others were just a bubble of jelly. Faced with this overwhelming variety, humans had to ask, how do we make sense of life on Earth? That's where classification comes in. Classification means organizing living things into groups based on how they're similar, how they're different, and how they've evolved. It's not just about names. It's about building a system, a map, that shows how life is connected. Imagine entering a huge library, but every book is scattered randomly. You'd never find what you're looking for. But if the books are arranged by subject, author, or genre, suddenly everything makes sense. In the same way, classification helps biologists understand life, predict traits, and even discover new species by looking at patterns. But this wasn't always easy. Long ago, people just grouped animals by what they looked like, birds, fish, snakes. But that method was messy. A whale swims like a fish, but it's not one. A bat flies like a bird, but it's a mammal. That's why modern biology uses a deeper system, one based on structure, genetics, and evolutionary ancestry. This system shows that even the most distant creatures are part of one giant family tree. Humans and mushrooms are distant cousins. Insects and crabs are closer than you'd think. And this classification isn't just for scientists. It tells us where we came from. Why we breathe oxygen. Why our cells have nuclei. Why some diseases jump from animals to humans, classification is not just a way to organize life. It is a way to understand life itself through the deep connections that unite all living things, across time and species.